Today, I'm going to tell you a story written down right here about a man named Michael. And this story, which follows Michael's life from college in 2019 into early adulthood in 2024, will highlight and give you insight into the housing issues faced currently by many Americans, perhaps even faced by you. Now, while Michael is a younger millennial at 27 years old, this story applies to many Americans across all ages. And again, it might even apply to you. So let's start this story. Ever since Michael was younger, his parents, who were smack dab in the middle class, told him that eventually moving out would probably be something that he would want to do. And while Michael's parents owned a home at that point, that wasn't always the case. In fact, when Michael was first born, they rented a small two bedroom condo right outside the city. So when they talked to Michael about one day moving out, they stressed the importance of eventually owning a home, but they also told him that owning a home doesn't have to be the first step and that renting can be a good option, especially if he's still getting settled into his career. Now this conversation between Michael and his parents took place in 2015, when Michael had just turned 18 right before he started college. At the time, the median household income was sitting at $55,775. The average national rent was about $1,000 and the median priced home was a bit under 300 grand. So naturally, both renting and buying were viable options at the time in the minds of Michael and his parents once he finished college. But during college, Michael actually planned to continue to live at home because his local state university was highly regarded, and that is exactly what he did. Now, in order to continue this story, we have to fast forward to 2019, because that summer, Michael graduated with an average but decent GPA in computer science, a field that showed much promise in the future, so much so that he actually managed to land an entry-level job right away in the next town over. And his starting salary was right in line with the median single income for that year, which was right under 40 grand at $39,810. Now, naturally, his parents were very proud, and so was he. And in order to reward himself for this hard work, he decided to finally move out. So he rented a small apartment about 15 minutes away from his parents' house and about 10 minutes away from work in the next town over. Now, his apartment's monthly rent was about $1,000, which was very close to the national average rent at the time of $1,100. And with his salary, it put him close to 30% rent to income. Now, Michael was ready. He was excited. But unfortunately, he was also unaware unaware that everything would come crumbling down in just a few months in 2020. Now, as 2019 progressed and Michael grew confident in his new job, he started to ponder the possibility of purchasing a house in a couple years. He loved his apartment, but he could also see how owning a small home, maybe with a nice yard to host barbecues for his new friends that he has met at work, could be very nice. So as he thought about this, he set a goal to own a house in about three years, giving him to around 2022 to 2023 to purchase. And then 2020 happened and everything changed. A recession hit, a shutdown and screeching halt to most of the economy, a hiring freeze, and most impactful of all, work from home. Now, luckily for Michael, he avoided any major, major layoffs in his company, although many others were not as lucky. They did tell him, though, that the office would be closed until further notice. So he was left in this weird situation. Keep his apartment close to work for no reason or save some money, move back home and work out of the guest bedroom. Now, Michael did have a pretty good relationship with his parents. And in such a weird time, it would probably be nice to have family around. And besides, it would just be temporary, he told himself. He imagined that just in a few months when the economy reopened, this whole thing would be over a year at tops. So that's exactly what Michael did. Michael finished his one-year lease in the summer and moved back home in the middle of 2020. And so did many other Americans, whether that was moving back home or just moving out of cities since work from home was so prevalent. Regardless, many Americans did move. And this actually caused huge price decreases in rents in major cities like New York, for example. 
And because of that, Michael actually thought that when he moved back closer to work, his rent, his rent might actually be even cheaper than it was when he left. So Michael was pretty happy. While the whole world seemed to be falling apart around him, he was back at home saving a ton of money, which would be perfect for a down payment for a home in the future. And on top of that, when he did move back into his apartment, probably for another year or so before purchasing, that rent would probably be cheaper than it was now when he left. Well, 2020 turned into 2021. And before work from home every morning, Michael would watch the news with his dad and drink his coffee. And on that news, he started to hear more and more talk about inflation. Isn't that what we deal with every year, he thought? Yes, it is. But the inflation they were talking about on the news was not the 2% target rate that the Fed aims for every year. No. The news was talking about how inflation was climbing well above that level. And Michael would witness that inflation rate continue to increase through the next year, peaking at a whopping 9.1% in June of 2022. A full two years after Michael returned home and getting close to when he said he wanted to buy a home. So knowing that, and with some extra money saved up, and feeling like he probably had overstayed his welcome, he began his home search. Little did he know that he was about to begin a home search in what would become, and what has become, the most unaffordable market in history. As Michael searched Zillow and Redfin, he soon realized that the literal exact houses he had seen listed for sale just a few years ago were now selling for sometimes as much as twice as before. Michael started to feel a little bit uneasy. So uneasy that he actually googled the estimated value of his own childhood home, the one that he was currently sitting in, in the guest bedroom. And what he saw completely shocked him. The house that his parents bought back in the early 2000s was now estimated to be worth over $500,000. Not only that, but when he went to the mortgage calculator, staring back at him was a 7.1% interest rate. 7%, he thought. Wasn't it under like 3% just a few months ago? It was, and unknown to him, mortgage rates also started to go up in early 2022 because the Fed was busy fighting that very same high inflation that he had heard about on the news. The rate, combined with the estimated value, spit out a mortgage monthly payment so high that he wondered if his own parents, the ones that literally bought the house, could have bought that same house now on their household income, which was very close to the national median income of $74,000. They couldn't. In fact, to be able to purchase that same house now, the one that they easily afforded when they were young, they would have to almost double their household income, close to $120,000. That exact moment is when Michael realized something. That even though he had done everything right, gone to college, got a degree in a growing field, and moved back home and saved a ton of extra money, he realized that he could not afford the average home, even as an above average achiever. Well, at least not by himself. A dual income was basically now a requirement for home ownership. And not just a dual income, but a dual income almost double the $74,000 median household income at the time, which takes into account dual incomes. Michael was shocked, scared, annoyed, pissed even, that simply because of when he was born, regardless of his achievements, he was priced out of owning a home. Michael, although thankful for his parents' home that he was staying in, also felt like this situation couldn't get any worse. It could, and it did. Because after realizing that he couldn't afford a home, he thought to himself that maybe he should just move back into his old apartment. So what did he do? He pulled up apartments.com and he searched for his old place. And again, another shocker. What the hell happened to all the cheap rents? His same apartment now was pushing almost $1,400, which was now the national average. Michael quickly pulled out a calculator and put in his new salary numbers, which luckily had been increased 10% over the last three years with the company. 
Unfortunately though, even with these new numbers, the new average rent would now account for almost 40% of his monthly pay. And remember, this was before taxes, before retirement contributions, and before health insurance. Which means that Michael and many other Americans found themselves stuck between a rock in a hard place. Stuck between unaffordable home ownership and continually increasing rents. Basically damned if you do and damned if you don't. And here's the problem. That whole situation didn't really get better for Michael in 2023 or now in 2024. In 2023, tech companies, the same companies who would hire someone like him in the first place, started cutting staff because the easy, low interest money they needed to grow dried up. And at the same time, while home price increases have slowed, we are still, to this day, so undersupplied that there really hasn't been any major price correction. Which means that Michael and millions of other Americans still can't afford a house. The problem, though, is that renting is also much more expensive than it used to be just a few years ago. Which means that if Michael wants to be financially prudent, he probably now has to get a roommate. Is that the end of the world? No. But it does beg the question, why? Why does someone who's done everything right have to make compromises now that they wouldn't have had to make just a few years ago? Well, a lot of people will just say, because that's how life is. And perhaps those people are right. But we, as humans, should always strive to increase the standard of living, not decrease it. Yet we are living in a time where the exact opposite is happening. And moving into 2024, there are only more problems on the horizon. Still not enough housing, inflation proving sticky in the 3% range, and an economy that may or may not enter recession precisely because of all the high interest rates required to fight inflation. So, with all that being said, where is Michael today? Well, he's doing okay, and he's keeping his head above water. And so are many, many other Americans. But Michael could have been better off. He could have been better off.